Welcome, everybody, to Might and Magic 6, with me, Chrysanthem. We are at the beginning of a wondrous adventure, and I don't know why I talk like this. So I'm just going to stop. Hi, everybody. Last time I said that we're going to have a journey to Blackshire and the sort of the master swordsman teacher. We're going to do this now. Um, we're going to travel past Bootleg Bay and we're basically just going to run because this whole area is populated by cannibals that start shooting at you the second you basically enter it. Um, they start shooting wasps at you and firebolts and they start stabbing you with spears and I do not like that thing one bit. I can just show you from a distance. They're quite scary actually. Oh, that's a she. That's a, a, a witch doctor. A headhunter. That's a she again. But they also have males. Now where are the males? Why are there no males here? There we go. Ironically, I think that the males are a bit weaker than the females, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think that the male witch doctors are the one that cast uh, wasps at you. I think it's called Swarm of Wasps or Magic Swarm or something, the spell. It's an earth magic spell. And the females cast firebolts. And of the two, the firebolt casting females are actually much more difficult because um, the wasp swarm, I think, can actually miss. And we got a protection from electricity. Nice. Didn't notice that before. Um, now we're just after clearing the dungeon in Castle Iron Fist. Um, so we have a lot of items that we can actually sell. So I'm going to just quickly sell them. I'll give you the leather cloak as well. What do we have? Firebolt. Not really useful. Um, so yeah, now we're in Bootleg Bay. Not really an important area. I'm gonna sell all these. 12 points of spread. I'm gonna keep Starburst. It may come in handy if we have a large clump of people that we need to kill on the surface. And we can sell all of these where's the armor armor oh, or somewhere here oh there we are abraham's metal works there we go and a lot of weapons a lot of spears i hate how the game auto sorts your things in this game because it's left to right and not stop to down i think i already explained this hmm can I, can I somehow do this? That is the question. Ah, there we go. Excellent. Uh, so now we have to visit the hammer of tongs. Just sell all of these. And since we're here, we can try and see if they have a better mace for us. Of course they don't. They have very, very cheap maces and hammers. Ironically, they have a steel broadsword, which is one of my favorite swords. Um, it's actually really powerful and well they do have a dark hammer but supposedly they specialize in hammers and maces and they only have you know the weakest hammers and maces go figure and one thing that we can also do here is if you remember the task that uh, that lord albert newton gave to us to find the fountain of magic well this is actually it and what you have to do is basically just drink from it um, I use all my characters to drink from it. I'm not sure if it's enough to have one character drink from it. Never tested it, to be honest. So I'm just, you know, I like being on the safe side. Um, so next time we visit Mist, uh, we are going to become a wizard. Oh my god, they, oh, they almost are out of me. Scary. And we're off to Freehaven. So yeah, this episode is going to be a bit boring, and as soon as we get to Freehaven, people will start shooting uh, coal beams and lightning bolts at us, and um, yeah, it's it's a lovely place, to be honest, you know. it We got a very, very nice greeting from them. Oh, we're going to do one more thing here. I nearly forgot. It's amazing, I'm just, I'm just running around with, you know, things flying in all directions around me. Um, so this is another castle throne room. This is Lord Osric Temple. Osric Temper. And he's going to give us another main quest. This time it's to clear out the demon outpost and give him 
or the devil outpost actually um and bring him the their battle plan sort of because that's the story of the game that de uh, the devils are invading your uh basically your planet um but yeah they they're here in Anroth. and i'm go we're going to get another promotion quest now this is a promotion quest for the uh the knight class however even if we don't have a knight class um it's a good thing that we get you know uh, the quest and then finish it because we do get some experience nevertheless these journeymen and wizards are actually fairly weak but yeah this uh this episode is basically just running around trying to get to the guy that will teach us how to use swords better and that's basically all that we're going to do and these are the horseshoes that i was talking about i'm just gonna pick four of them up Luckily in Freehaven, which is the largest sort of town in this game, there are actually two coaches, which means we have four horseshoes to pick up. And this is the second one. Oh, please move. Thank you. By the by, if uh, if a peasant blocks your way, you can just shout, on them, uh, shout at them by using Y and they'll move. Which is a nice thing because sometimes they just block you into somewhere and to just ruin your day because they don't want to move away. I'm not going to be giving too much of a tour of Freehaven to be honest. It's a really important city though because it has the basically all the highest uh, all the highest self and elemental school guilds including the earth guild which was not on mist. Uh, and it's really important. It's sort of a quote unquote high level town has some nice items in it as well just gonna give the skill points to everybody um but since we're here we're actually going to finish the cavalier quest which is incredibly trivial as far as promotion quests go it's basically the easiest one probably the easiest or the second easiest quest in the game we just need to visit this tavern talk to chadwick get the nomination for a cavalier which is the only thing that you need to do you don't even need to fight you just need to find him but luckily you have me and i know the game inside out and from left to right top to bottom whichever way you want so yeah so i just need to return to aldrich temper and turn this quest in oh and by the way the music in this region the region of Freehaven is probably my favorite song in Might Magic 6 and one of my favorite uh, video game music songs. It's incredibly relaxing. Um, it's called Moonlit Snow Journey. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, but if you have the time, I do suggest that if you don't hear it right now because I'm talking over it and the game sound is actually so low, that you go ahead and listen to it. It's a really, really nice guitar, uh, really, really nice guitar uh, song instrumental song so now we're done with cavalier we might as well pick up the champion quest which is the second promotion for night we're not going to be doing that one anytime soon though because we need to we would need to go to a dungeon and basically defeat someone that's that they call i think the warlord or something like that uh so yeah you know Four people with, you know, sticks and butter knives against a guy they call Warlord. Not really happening anytime soon. Um, happening in the future, though. Definitely happening in the future. But anyway, I was talking about the songs in this game. Uh, they were all made, I think, by a composer by the name of Paul Romero, who also did musical scores for the Heroes Quest. Uh, not Heroes Quest, uh, the Heroes of Might and Magic series. Um, and in my opinion, he is the best video game music composer. I really, really like his music. Um, and yeah, what we were doing here in Freehaven is basically getting a coach to Blackshire, which is the Eastern coach stable, sort of. You have the eastern one here and you have the western one here. Um, why you have the western one here is... I honestly don't know. Because this is east, this is west. I think this one... 
no, this one goes to the west as well. And so it makes no sense. I'm not going to try. I'm not even going to try and understand that. But anyway, this, this, one, this is the one that you're looking for. You just go to Blackshire. Now, Blackshire is a nasty place. It's populated by werewolves and things like that. But what we're looking for is him. Yes, the master, the master sword instructor. And as you can see, we do need rank eight in swords. So it's a good thing that we saved those, uh, that we saved those skill points. And it actually costs zero gold. But we do need to be cavaliers for that. So I knew there was a reason that I actually became a cavalier before, uh, or cavalier, uh, before I came here. Good thing I did though, because that would that would have been a pain. Well, not that much though, because you know I can just hitch the coach and go back. And since we're here, we're going to try to cheese one more quest, sort of get a get a bump in our experience. Oh, there's one roll behind me already. Hello. Oh, might as well cast wizard eye. Make it easier for me to sort of get around them. Oh, it blew up in my face. I, I hope I don't die. Oh my god. Oh my god, she dodged it. What a god. What a god. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, three of my characters actually died now because they have a tombstone on their face. Or on their portrait. Uh, and I don't have the raised dead spell yet. And even if I had it, my paladin and my... Oh my god. And there's a werewolf still aggro. Donny, please go away. Please go away. Thank you. Go away. Thank you. Excellent. You did well, Alexis, by dodging it. My god. I never really appreciate the perception skill. I only use it, you know, to finish the game. But perception actually gives you a chance to to dodge traps. And I think because I have level 4 normal perception, I had a 4% chance to dodge that trap and that happened. Perception coming through big time today. So we are going to travel to Castle Iron Fist via coach this time. Now the thing is, if you haven't been to Freehaven yet, you won't be able to use the coach to get there. But once you actually visit the region of Freehaven, you can take the coach from Castle Iron Fist to Freehaven again. So even though this was sort of a mini adventure that we had this episode, it was still really, really good. Uh, I mean, for example, like three of my characters died. Like that's really, really good. But no, I'm just jesting. Um, wow, 1,050 gold. It hurts me. And some of my things were broken. Nothing I can't fix or Zoltan can't fix. Um, and this is what we were going after while being massacred by werewolves. This is Lord Kilburn's shield and is an item that we need for a council quest, which is located right here in Wilbur Humphrey's throne room. Uh, I didn't accept the quest earlier because I completely forgot about that because I was too busy explaining things uh, in, I think, like the first or second episode. Uh, but yeah, this is basically the quest. This is basically the quest giver. He sort of, how should I say this, instructs you to find what's, go uh, what's happening to Lord Kilburn, sort of, uh, supposedly disappeared near Blackshire. We found his bloodied shield, we're going to return it to him. Um, so yeah, now he has, he sort of um, instructs his, uh, no, he is his dude in the council to vote for us. Uh, so that's one thing, and we're also going to accept the Crusader quest, which is our Paladin promotion quest. So this episode was actually incredibly, uh, should I say lucrative? In terms of experience, we actually got how many levels? We got five levels. That is that is really good. Of course, you can do all of this much earlier because I basically cheesed two quests. Uh, I just beeline to you know Free Haven, got the Cavalier promotion quest, got it, and then went straight went straight to Blackshire, uh, primarily for the Master Sword. But then we also got Lord Kilburn's shield in the chest. Uh, it blew up in her face. Um, regardless of me having expert disarm trap because blackshire is one of the highest level areas around and i think you need at least like um at least master ranking seven i think 
you know, to open the chest safely. Uh, but yeah, it was it was worth it regardless of the consequences. To be honest, that perception really came through though. So now I'm just going to do a quick level up of all my characters. Luckily, we have a fairly large amount of gold, so I'll be able to do that. Now we will be leveling spirit magic first with our paladin and we want it on level 4 at least because we want the heroism spell to affect all our characters. We're going to have air magic, keep leveling body magic with her and water magic with him. You know what, I'm gonna dump all my points in spirit and air magic. I want to get the, the most useful magic schools to expert and master rank as fast as possible. Um, master water magic is incredibly useful because of the town portal spell and the master air magic is incredibly useful again because of the fly spell. Um, spirit magic has a lot of buffs. Uh, heroism and blast are just, uh, are just two of them but it also has the raise dead spell and having master spirit magic basically enables you to have a larger time window beha before you ca uh, before you cannot raise the dead anymore um, on your own. You can still visit the temple. The, pe the temple basically has no no time limit, and the body magic is basically the healing magic. Um, its highest tier spell is power cure, which in which heals all your characters for a massive amount of hit points. So that's why I want to get them to master as fast as possible now air magic teacher and spirit magic teacher spirit magic teacher is no they're actually all in in uh, in new sorpigal they're also all in free haven so yeah okay let's do, just go to new sorpigal we're going to visit the spirit magic teacher first mr abdullah no that's body magic uh, Virgil, yes, mind magic, and of course the last one, Enoch, 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 I think it's Enoch, spirit magic, there we go, and Bishop, Bishop Inquisitorio, we already, we already met him, but we, first things first, we need, I think, 12 spirit magic, um, and even if we don't, we need to become high priests to, to master it which is the second promotion quest for our cleric. So we're not going to be getting Master Spirit Magic anytime soon. And Air Magic is... Uh, well, that's going to be a problem because the Air Magic teacher in Usurpigal is located above the bank for some reason. And I don't think you can reach her by jumping here. We have some graphical glitches here. Uh, luckily, on the side of the bank, <laughs> in the... What are those called? Not the holes, but uh, the crevices between the stones. I'm not sure what they're called. Let's just call them crevices. Someone actually hid a spell scroll. And if you click on it, ta-da, you actually find it. Um, and just by luck, this is actually a fly spell scroll. So we're going to have Alexis cast it. And this is how fly works. Ouch. The fireball was not part of my brilliant plan of explaining how fly works. It's an incredibly useful spell because while flying you actually have double the movement speed and a lot of mobs have trouble hitting you even if they're ranged because you move so fast. You can sort of just do flybys and hit them. Um, you basically fly up with page up and you fly down with insert. Um, and if you, if you just press hope while flying You'll just basically just stop flying and drop down. Uh, it's interesting that you won't take any falling damage from fly if you hit home. Um, for some reason, even if you don't have feather fall. But if, for example, your fly spell runs out while you're in the air. Um, if you're high up in the air, all your party is going to get wiped. So do be careful about that. Um, on master level, though, it... it lasts I think one hour per point of skill though so I don't think you'll be running out often let me just get air magic expertise and Carl Salem is on mist we actually already met him as well and the thing with this stupid tower shooting fireballs at me while I uh, while I fly is actually sort of connected to 
the history of uh, of Enroth of this place and further into the game when we will be doing the promotion quests for the archer which is I think it's the the I think it's the war mage and the battle mage or something like that um, we are actually going to first find the keys for the towers and the second promotion quest is going to be uh, locking the towers so they don't actually hit friendly targets um, in that case they actually won't be hitting anybody but you know it's good that if you're flying around a big fireball doesn't hit you in the face like it didn't to me but yeah I think this is it for this episode it was actually very oh I didn't oh I'm so sad now I could have actually gone ahead while I had fly and visit the water magic teacher as well but I completely forgot that I can level water magic up first uh, not first but as well do we have water walk yes we do have water okay we do have water walk um so what we're going to do is we're going to walk to the expert water magic teacher as well because now we're not afraid we are leveled up something fierce now there are two islands offshore in new sorpigo uh do not i repeat do not mess around with this pot it will spawn a lot of goblin kings and wizards around you and if you are of a low level that will completely wreck your day do however mess out and mess with this crate it has some wonderful loot in it from time to time i was lucky this time but you know same goes with this crate nope no luck i did find i remember in one playthrough i found the best shield in the game uh, well best shield apart from artifact shields in this game so i was incredibly uh, i was incredibly satisfied with it and this is the entrance to the final dungeon in New Sorpigal. And this is, in my opinion, one of the one of the most annoying dungeons in this uh, in this game. It's called Garrick's Forge. We are we unfortunately will have to visit it at some point in the game. For Lord Albert Newton. Waterwalk actually already wore off. Now what we're looking for is another island offshore, but to the south of here. It's going to be infested with uh, goblin kings and wizards and all kinds of malarkey. Um, but honestly, we've leveled up a lot and we're still having trouble with them. <laughs> oh, I spoke too soon. So I'm thinking of just running towards the house and just getting that... Boom. That expert uh, water magic. Wow. I am... I'm not doing very well, am I? Luckily not that I've met uh, that I've leveled up body magic this much. Um, the cleric actually heals for a significant amount of hit points. There we go. Water magic expertise that will help us a lot. Let's just recast water walk because I don't want any surprises happening while we're in the middle of the ocean. Sea? Ocean? I think this is an ocean. Looks like an ocean. Doesn't look like a sea. If I remember what and what Enroth is shaped like, I think this is the ocean. Do not know which ocean it is, though. Do not particularly care as well. But yeah, and I think that this is going to be the end of the episode. Um, it is a, it is a more relaxed episode, but it is very. What we did now was very crucial in actually powering up for the rest of the game, because now that we have the the master sword skill you can actually equip this pirate cutlass right here there we go and as you can see we get a much larger attack bonus and the damage increases as well and the recovery time does not actually go down either at all or does not go down by a lot so this is actually a significant buff to the damage that we deal so the next thing we need to do is we need to get an axe for alexis here do you have an axe here? And you have a hand axe, which is the worst axe. Let's just skip on that. But let's get a piercing dagger for <clears throat> Sultan, who I forgot to equip it with another dagger as well. So as you can see, you get the, the attack bonus actually adds up to your attack um, bonus. So does the damage. So 
you get a lot more powerful this way. And now we just travel back to Castle Ironfist. I'm just gonna get a quick tour. There we go. Oh, didn't actually buy it. Bought the precision bow. So now I have great bows as well. Do some inventory management. Poppy snaps. There we go. Can we get some better armor? Hmm, let's see. Do you have anything good? Mm, nah. Plus 8 armor, plus 8 accuracy for 2025 gold pieces. In my opinion, is not worth it at this point. Um, I still have to be a bit careful with our money. And that's why I tend not to buy enchanted things. Because in my opinion, they do not make that much of a difference. Unless it's a really good enchantment. Then I don't mind paying the money. But usually I just, you know, look for something unenchanted. And this, for example, is really good. This is the basic plate armor. It has a value of 1000 and an armor class of plus 20. I'm going to be buying that so hard. I think we already have dragon leather. Do we have dragon leather or do we have enchanted leather? No, we have enchanted leather. But finally, Roderick gets some armor. Finally. We have good chainmail on you already. Gonna sell these two and we're actually going to buy the dragon leather as well. We could actually... No, it's enchanted. This one is enchanted as well. So I'm just gonna switch this enchanted leather up. Now this is called the enchanted leather, but it's not enchanted. Which reminds me, I have enchant item. Oh, I already sold everything I had. Um, yeah. Let's just check if he has any good swords. Warrior longsword. Not really. We have better things. So I'll try to remember that next time I actually need to, uh, the next time I actually need to enchant the items before selling them because I'm gonna get some bonus, uh, bonus gold for it. Might as well actually show you how enchant item works. Now the strength of enchantments of the enchant item spell, uh, scales with your water magic skill. Uh, there is a 10% chance per point of skill and water magic to actually succeed in enchanting it and the item that you you're trying to enchant has to be at least 450 in value now if you're trying to enchant weapons which is allowed when you become a master in water magic um the value that it has uh, that you know the the minimal amount of value that it has to have before you can enchant it is half halved um, basically, it needs 225 value. Well, let me just try enchanting something. And uh, my inventory is completely empty, so I'm going to unequip this dragon leather. I can also enchant this defender helm. Enchant anything else. Nope, the knight gauntlets I can't enchant because it only has a value of 250. I can enchant the steel chain mail. That's already enchanted, so I cannot re enchant it. Cannot enchant that. Can enchant that. And I can also enchant that, so I'm going to be enchanting a few things. It makes an annoying sound when you enchant things, but basically you just double click and you go straight into your inventory. Then just sort of, you know, enchant your things. So I now I have a Dragon Leather Protection, excellent, plus 10 to all resistances. That is quite a strong enchantment in my opinion. And oh, ooh, we got a Defender Helm of Mana. Regenerate spell points over time. Now, the spell points regeneration is actually fairly fairly insignificant it's i think one i think it's like one mana per 10 minutes uh so 10 seconds of gameplay but it's really good if you're in a pinch and you want to cast some cheap healing spells so i tend to put the first the first uh sort of mana regenerating piece of equipment onto my cleric so I'm going to do that. Give it the steel helm. Sorry. I enchant this. Basically just repeat the process. Now the thing 
about enchanting items and selling them is if you're selling items that are enchanted, nice, armor class plus six. That immediately makes it a lot better. And poison resistance plus nine. So the enchantments are completely random, uh, like um, the type of enchantment you get and the strength of the enchantment you get. So sometimes you're going to have a really good item with, and you're going to put a really crappy enchantment on it and you're going to have a 450 item value um, item and you're going to put like the best enchantment in the game on it. But you know, that's how RNG works. You have absolutely no control over that. Uh, but if you are in a pinch for money, if you hi have a high enough merchant skill, you can actually buy an item from a shop enchant it and then sell it back for a higher value uh, but in any case you can use enchant item spell for enchanting not uh, not enchanted items and then selling them for a higher amount of gold um, i think dragon leather had a value of 600 or something like that or 750 um, and i basically just added 1000 value to it um, i know this plate armor had a value of 1000 and i added an 800 value on it it doesn't translate directly into gold uh, because the gold you add depends on your merchant skill but in any case like i i would have sold this plate armor for for example 600 gold pieces before now that is a plate armor of might i can could sell it for 1200 gold pieces which is 600 gold pieces more and that's really good so you can do that if you're having trouble with money um in the later stages i tend not to enchant items at all because i'm just rolling rolling in dough um and most of the items you get in the end game are actually enchanted anyway so yeah doesn't matter but anyway that's it for this episode it was a it was sort of more relaxed episode we did some adventuring found some, uh, explored some new regions not really explore just you know <laughs> speed ran through them um but next time we're going to be adventuring into the the two remaining dungeons in the Castle Iron Fist region. Um, we're going to be doing two quests in them as well. And I hope everything will go according to plan, which it never goes, by the way. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.